So the Survivor Series could become one of the biggest WWE pay-per-views, PLEs of the year. Because by the end of it, I think we're going to know a lot more about WrestleMania. It is a classic five-match show as well, so there aren't too many rumours. But I have put on my detective hat. And I've gone out there and I've found as many as I can. Simon Miller, let's go. We, of course, start with the bloodline versus the bloodline. And the big question mark is when it comes to Paul Heyman and that Jimbo Uso. Well, it's like WCW 1996. Whose side are they on? Now, it does come from Smackdown when Paul Heyman did return. He was winking at Jimmy Uso. And he was wearing a suit that looked very much like a suit that Solo Sokoa was wearing back in May. But all of a sudden, you've got to throw Sami Zayn into this too. Because there was that one skit when the OG bloodline were backstage being like, we need a fifth person. And when Solo Sokoa's music hit, Sami Zayn did something with his phone. Took out his pocket and threw it on the sofa. Now, listen, that could be nothing. We're detectives, damn it. It could be everything. Now, Heyman is so smart, I'm sure he's thought this out. So he wants to trick you to think he's about to trick you. So you do get tricked. Natty's not trying to trick you at all. It's what he would be doing. Although, while I can see him and Jimmy Uso going heel, I can't imagine we do that for Sami Zayn. Who the hell is going to boo Sami? I tell you, absolutely no one. Maybe Kevin Owens. So yeah, given all this information is out there, some people are actually saying that Paul Heyman and Jimbo may screw over Roman Reigns which is how the Bloodline 2.0 go and get the victory in the war games. The next part of all of this is that do they actually join the Bloodline 2.0? That's a bit harder, because of course, the reason Jimmy was off TV for so long is because Solo Sokoa and his friends beat the hell out of him, and it was the same for Paul Heyman. They shield power bombed him through Alan the Announce table, so you have to figure that they're really pissed off. At the same time, Reigns has been such a dick. Maybe this is the case of the lesser of two evils. And there is the person hanging over all of this. There he is up there, the final boss, The Rock. I mean, this chat is never going to go away until we get to WrestleMania 41. But some fans are totally convinced that the Great One is pulling the strings of the Bloodline 2.0. So that does turn out to be true. Remember this. And don't forget, WWE loves using history to shape its future. When The Rock went heel at the Survivor Series 1998, which, by the way, means this is anniversary and teamed up with the McMahons what was he doing on the raw beforehand he was hitting Vince with the people's elbow because it was a ruse they did want to trick you so that when he joined the corporation and I was part of this I couldn't believe it everyone was like well you son of a ditch now there is a lot to that trying to pull it off would be really hard but if you were going to be successful my word what an amazing roller coaster that would be but also there is an option three here Roman Reigns did an interview with SI the other day and he was all like, well, I think the bloodline thing's going to carry on throughout 2025. So maybe you have the OG bloodline, and maybe you have the bloodline 2.0, and you have the bloodline 3.0. I mean, why not let it grow? There's rumors with CM Punk being involved as well, and I actually do believe these ones a little bit. You can certainly see Seth Rollins running out and beating the hell out of him to take him out of the war games. And then Seth being like, oh, well, look who it is. The Bloodline. The people that came to me and asked for my help. And when I said no, who did you recruit instead? That guy, aka my mortal enemy. And look, we were going to do CM Punk versus Seth Rollins at this year's WrestleMania. So I hope we do do it at WrestleMania 41 so we can plant those seeds. And do you know this actually all ties into the Women's War Games match too? Bear with me. Now this one is far more of a reach, but somebody did take out Jade Cargill on Smackdown when they threw her into a car. By all reports, she is injured for real, so all the best to her. But it means from a TV point of view, we are not going to see her for a long ass time. So we do have to choose the attacker at one point, maybe, just maybe, we are finally going to pull the trigger and there's going to be no more feel the glow because instead it's going to be Phil the No, and Naomi's going to turn heel. I think that may be worthwhile, because let's face it, she's already had her women's championship match against Nia Jax, which she did not win. But what other names have come out of my mouth during this video? Jimmy Uso, and of course, there's a real-life connection between Jimmy Uso and Naomi. So if you didn't want to start a new bloodline, or again, throw all these people into the bloodline 2.0, you could for a few years. People have been saying that. Wouldn't it be great to see Jimmy and Naomi as a bad guy team? And it probably would. So if Naomi did do that, and Jimmy did this, well, do the math, it's right there. And it would keep me intrigued, and also it means you could do the Bianca Belair versus Naomi feud, and Bailey would have to be involved in that as well. As we move into 2025, if you're trying to come up with some new matches, 
Well, it's genuinely something I never thought I'd see. And there is some hints to all of this, because when we had that War Games segment on SmackDown recently, Naomi looked at the camera. You can find this on the internet. Maybe it's on the screen right now. She looked pretty pissed off. We'll also move to the United States title now. I'll be honest with you, Jack. I can't believe this one. I think it sparked into life because the betting odds are suggesting it, but the betting odds change all the time. But apparently, Shinsuke Nakamura may actually defeat LA Knight for the US title. What? Now that does happen, I'm going to have split emotions, because on one hand, yes, finally we're doing something with Shinsuke, but on the other, WWE in the new era has been so good at building things and sitting on things and being patient. Nakamura's only been back two weeks. Quite frankly, I'm surprised he's getting a title shot so early. I also don't know why they'd feel to rush this, because you could turn Shinsuke Nakamura into a way bigger force than he is at the moment. When I search my tum tum, it just doesn't fill the time. Although I guess at the same time, excuse my stupid sentencing there, you could have Shinsuke win and then LA Knight wins it back on that Netflix show or Saturday Night's Lane event. And that probably would create more interest. And I don't mind short title runs. Just have fun with it. I shall also double back round to the Women's War Games match now too, because it is an obvious one staring us in the face. But money in the bag briefcase. Now this is always going to be hinted at any time we do get to a pay-per-view, PLE. But Survivor Series is different because we have never seen somebody cash in their briefcase in the middle of a War Games match. And that is why I would totally do it. Because Tiffany Stratton could become the brand new women's champion, but the War Games can't stop. The War Games would have to continue. And then Tiffany Stratton could leave, I suppose. And maybe that's why the bad guys lose. I really do think we can get away with it as well. Because one, WrestleMania is miles away. And two, we are introducing Intercontinental and US Women's Championships, so the Money in the Bank briefcase does kind of go down in terms of importance just a little bit, and it's still badass and we shouldn't get rid of it, but all of a sudden it vanishing now, it's not a problem. Otherwise, of course, it will be the bloodline that gets all the headlines the next day, especially if The Rock does turn up. That's another rumor. It would be kind of strange, because if you knew he was going to be at the Survivor Series, why would you have him turn up at Bad Blood at the same time? It's never a bad thing. The final boss being on a show, it gets people talking. There's not much to report with the Intercontinental title either, because what is going to happen there, if we do have all these shenanigans over the rest of the card, is that Seamus, Ludwig Kaiser and Bron Breaker are going to have a banger. They're going to bang each other. They're going to bang stuff up. When Bron Breaker hits somebody with a spear, probably Ludwig Kaiser, and gets the one, two, three. And I ain't got no problem with that. Sometimes you just gotta keep it simple stupid. I do think you are gonna get at least one turn in that main event though. So if I had to sort of list it in order, my number one is Paul Heyman. I mean, Roman Reigns in that interview that we already talked about, even he was kind of casting shade on Paul. So maybe I am just being take down lie lane here. That's the point of wrestling. It's meant to be a work. It's meant to keep you guessing. That's why I think it could be one of the matches of the year because no matter who wins and who loses, it is going to shape everything for the rest of 2024 and the first few months of 2025. And then we also get the Kevin Owens, Cody Rhodes stuff too. So WWE is in a very good position. Color me excited. Now, of course, look, there's going to be a bunch of rumors breaking all the time. So if you think you know one, jump them in the comments below. And hey, maybe you have a mad prediction. You should throw it in there too. Because if you do get it right, you could be a proud panda. Please also do interact with the video, like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Click the video on the screen, which is my ups and downs for the latest episode of Raw. So you can get excited about the Go Home Show. But otherwise, we shall be back at the weekend to up those downs for Survivor Series. I am going to be in a hotel room. Please do forgive me. But I am traveling to New York and Chicago this weekend to wrestle for progress and defy so come out if you are around what a mad few days that is i'm excited though take care my friends goodbye